Hello guys, it's me Amy, and this time I'm bringing you a different type of video. I will be talking about Yume Nikki. Yume Nikki is a video game that was a big part of my life, as I found out about it 9 years ago through a playthrough video on YouTube. I have a lot of memories with it, I would draw lots of fan art and report pictures on Tumblr, but like many others in the community, I have found myself theorizing what the game could be about. However, the creator themselves has said that the video game is simply one with no plot, no story. Then, there is no reason to theorize, right? Well, I think the creator is allowing us to theorize anything from its everything, without us being trapped in one single answer. That is why I am here with my in-depth analysis of Yumeniki. For those who haven't played it, I really encourage you to play it first before watching this video, as I will cover basically every detail and spoilers inside the game. It is free on Steam, and honestly it's a whole experience to play it blindly, so please go check it out. If you're highly interested in exploration games, then you won't regret it. But for those who don't mind, or don't quite remember what it is about, let me summarize it quickly. So Yume Nikki, Japanese for Dream Diary, is a video game created by Kikiyama meaning the RPG Maker 2003 program. It first released in 2004, while the final version, 0.10, got released on 2007. It is a simple exploration game about a girl called Madatsuki, which means window in Japanese, and she is a presumed hikikomori who does not want to get out of her apartment. But when she dreams, she can open the door, where then she is greeted by 12 more doors. This area called the Nexus leads her to multiple dream worlds, and upon exploring them, we can find these objects called the Fix, which gives us a variety of appearances or abilities, like the ability to ride a bicycle or even kill anyone you meet. Once you find all 24 effects inside these dream worlds, you can place them all inside the Nexus. Then, you wake up and take the stairs that have now been placed for you outside, so Madoski can jump and fall down to her demise. Yes, it's a very dark ending, but I believe this ending, along with the strangeness of her dreams, is what brought the community to brainstorm for theories. As for myself, I have researched thoroughly and came up with a total of 7 theories for the game. In this video, I will cover 2 of them as it is a lot of info to cover. Without further ado, let's start. The most popular one and considered as overrated is the sexual assault theory. In this particular theory I came up with, the horrible assault was mainly oral. The number world is the biggest provider for this theory, as it has multiple events and objects that support this theme. I would like to mention first that unlike the rest of the doors of the Nexus, the number world door makes a different sound when you open and close it. This is already a sign that the number world is more significant and should be the first to be explored. Upon entering this world, the player will begin noticing the repeating numbers and walls depicting zippers with a face and arms and legs attached to them. There are two rooms you can enter, the bedroom and the stabbing room. The bedroom consists of a room brim with beds, but one of these beds can give you a 1 out of 5 chance to teleport you to the staircase of hands. Along with these beds, there's also closets. They don't do much, but little fun fact. There are these bird girls called Tori Ningen that stroll around the dream worlds. If you step the one that is in this room and open the third closet, it takes you to a small version of hell, where you can see another Madotsuki as a ghost. Moving to the stepping room now, we can see that it is a small room filled with brown beans with legs called wheelies. If you have the knife effect and kill them all, you will be able to see a blue landscape-like object. It looks like two eyes and a nose. Even though there's two number world rooms you can enter, there are two secret areas that are hiding behind the zippers. The easiest one is simply in the bedroom, as there is a zipper puking blood at the very bottom of the map. Entering it, you go to the guillotine world, where there's many Toriningen about to chase you, this is where you can find the guillotine and gain the sever head effect. As you play more of the game, you can see that sever heads have a big presence in the game. 
there are in other worlds, such as the White Desert, the Eyeball World, and even the famous character Uboa is a severed head. After you gain the severed head effect, you can escape this world by finding the correct closet. We are back to the number world, with the creepy zippers on the walls. The other secret area, which is more obscure, yet the most symbolic, is a zipper that's located on the southeast corner of the main room. There is a random chance the mouth of its face will be open. When you stab the open mouth with a knife, it plucks blood and allows you to enter. This is where you meet the red monster Kyukyukun, who is simply standing behind the stairway, rubbing the banister although slowly. Going up the stairs, there is Madotsuki's door, one you can actually open, but when you do, a flashy jump scare of a deformed face pops up. There is no option but for Madotsuki to wake up on her own. So what does it all mean? With this knowledge so far, the number will tells the story of a past where Madotsuki was forcibly assaulted through the mouth. The zippers are the representation of the assaulter's pants, while the repeating severed heads in her dreams represent where her trauma manifested and her wanting to remove her head as a way to liberate herself from the agony. Moreover, the blue landscape in the stabbing room can be seen either as a phallic symbol or a face with a distressed bulging mouth. Similar thing with Kyukyukun, as his body is lacking of limbs, is also commonly seen as a phallic symbol by the fan community. By the way, did you know that door was originally not Madotsuki's door? An unused door was found for this place, and it is actually a texture of a face. The same face you can see behind Kyukyukun in the background. A face. Could this be Madotsuki's interpretation of the assaulter? Additionally, arms and feet are present beyond the number world, like the eyeball world and in Uboa's event. Upon interacting with Uboa, its face automatically distorts and teleports you to this white desert-like place, with a big monster puking red liquids and holding onto five hills with its five limbs. Some may see the monster as the assaulter because of its aggressive nature with the hills. However, I believe it's the opposite. Considering the distressed puking faces from the number world, the monster is Madoski herself, having to endure the pain of touching the assaulter various times. Other strong signs of molestation include the staircase of hands, where you can evidently see long arms with hands reaching upwards. Another popular sign is a monster called Henkeishita, seen in hell and in the footprint path. Again, no sign of a head but an eye on the chest and a mouth on the stomach. Equally the feeling of being watched and desired in disturbing ways. Walking through the footprint path as well leads you to meet these water monsters, and if you press the tip of their bodies, they puke out a bit of blood with their funny faces. I don't think I have to explain this part to let you know what it means, and I also think I said enough. So, let's move on to the next theory. The second theory is alien invasion. This one is pretty wacky, but definitely less shocking than the first theory. In this case, the alien invasion is happening below her apartment. She is afraid to go out her apartment, hence she will not open the door, and we the players do not know what happens below on ground. But in her dreams, there is a large UFO presence. Going through the underground world, you can find a spaceship where a non-threatening alien takes you to Mars. In Sky Garden, you can see the green colored humans staring at the sky, where UFOs seem to pass by here and then. People say that walking up the stairs to Sky Garden, there is a chance you will see falling people in the sky. But I believe they are UFOs once again because of the correlation with Sky Garden. The monsters that lurk through the water in the docks and sewers are representations of the aliens that have invaded Earth. 
It is also important to note that in the sewers, there are at least nine surreal drawings in the walls, where we can assume are Madotsky's interpretations of the deformed aliens. In White Desert, there is another surreal monster called Taco Fusen, which is a rare event. Clearly, there are various forms of aliens in her dreams. Wherever you go, there will be a strange being. But did you know there is also a chronological story to it? It begins with a hidden heart-shaped creature that swims through the waters of the number world. You can only see it if you use the cat effect several times though. This creature is neon and bright, but hides itself from the humans. However, the next door, the neon world, reveals most of the strange yet harmless beings in plain view. It is almost like they are introducing themselves to Madotsky. They look friendly, charming, and flashy. They are dancing and enjoying their stay, and you even get to have the neon effect, a prominent theme in their alien culture. Things take a turn though, on shield folk world. Suddenly we have tall round creatures holding shields. You can see them individually or together as a group, creating a sense of military force. They are less friendly, and instead, putting their defenses up against the humans. As the candle world is a sign of prayers, and internal fear as told by the candles, earthly humans are now realizing the aliens weren't as accepting as before, and suddenly, eyeball world shows the terror that came after. Walking limbs, screaming heads, and of course bloody eyeballs. The aliens have done something horribly wrong to the humans. It's chaos and bloody, and hope is lost. The big Mesoamerican figure is lingering in the background, possibly signifying the true feral nature of the aliens. Now that they have killed many humans, they are now implementing and painting their extraterrestrial art onto Earth, graffiti world. Reversing the human-made designs, now, their colorful neon civilization is taking a hold of them. You can hear the different sounds with every unique texture on the floor, and on this same room, you are given the bicycle, the ability to go faster, a sign to run away from this invasion. If you see the background, it is very odd and abstract, but most importantly, fans notice that it looks like a mix of two characters that appear on the game, E-Man and O-Man, were found in the mall. Clearly, they are not human. If they are twisted together, could this be a depiction of procreation, creating new generations of alien families? Another thing to note, when I first saw this background drawing, it also made me think of a fetus, which also fits the theme of aliens expanding on Earth. Next up is Mural World. The alien civilization had enough time to implement murals and declare Earth as their own. We can see a glance of how humans died with the effects found here. There are two monsters you can find, and on each spot there is a pool of blood. Upon interacting with them, you get the blonde hair and long hair effects. These monsters are the aliens who invaded, so it turns out that they are eating humans as their way of surviving on Earth. Now that the aliens have dinner, Less and less humans are being found, as symbolized by the Snow World, Dyke World, Butter World, and Black World. The Kid Mafurako, who is found in Black World, is invisible and teleports Madotsky elsewhere as a symbol of security. And the blocks that resemble buildings are monochromatic purple and white, so there is a sense of vast loneliness. Last but not least is the Forest World, Mother Nature of Earth which is now inhabited by gloomy ghosts, possibly from the humans themselves, who have lost their beautiful planet and their civilization. This is the end of part one. So, what are your thoughts on them so far? I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you soon with either a song cover or part two of Human Nikki Theories. So, see you guys! Bye bye!